What's up guys, Nook here from TV Box Top bringing to you the latest in Nook mini PCs. For today's video, we have a model from Ace Magician that falls right into that $350 price range running on a 12th generation Intel Core i5 CPU running up to 4.4GHz with 16GB of DDR4 RAM and 512GB SSD storage. It has Wi-Fi 6 technology, Bluetooth 5.2, and a SATA SSD expandable storage facility. So in this review, we look at the possibilities you have with this unit as a standard high-performance Nook Mini PC when applied to activities such as video editing, Windows gaming, and retro gaming. We'll see how it performs with 4K HDR HLG videos, surround sound audio output, and I'll also use its SATA expandable storage facility to install alternative operating systems such as Android x86 and a Chrome OS branch framework with full access to the Google Play Store and root access. So that begins right after this brief intro, so stay tuned. And welcome back. Let's first take a look at the package contents, starting with the AD15 model. You get one HDMI cable, a 19 volt 6.3 amps 119 watts DC power supply, the AC power cable for the power supply, and a user manual. So this model has an all plastic vertical standing design with the Intel Core i5 sticker and a QR code to the Ace Magician website. At the front here, you have two USB 3.0 ports, one USB Type-C display port and a headphone jack. To its rear side, it has two USB 2.1 ports, another pair of USB 3.0 ports, a gigabit LAN port, a reset button, its DC power input socket, a Kensington lock and its exhaust vent. On its surface, it has a warning sticker indicating that if you cannot log into your Microsoft account during the boot up process, skip and log in after you booted into Windows. You have a QR code for support services and a power LED button. And to its base, you have a pair of anti skid rubber feet, lots of ventilation holes, and two screws to access the SATA expandable storage facility. And it's also where you can do a teardown to access its internal components. So I've already booted into Windows and logged into my Microsoft account. And let's take a look at its system and hardware information. The Ada 64 Extreme app shows that the version of Windows is Windows 11 Pro. Its CPU is the Octa-Core Intel Core i5-12450H that has 8 cores and 12 threads with a boost clock speed of 4.4GHz. It comes with 16GB of DDR4 RAM via two 8GB 2666MHz memory sticks. Its GPU is the Intel UHD graphics for 12th generation processors with a max frequency of 1.2GHz. It has a max resolution of 4K 60Hz with OpenGL version 4.6. Its audio adapter is the Intel AlderPoint HD Audio. Its M.2 SSD is a generic 2280 NGFF model with a max read speed of 490 megabytes per second. Below here, it shows that it has a 1TB Western Digital SATA 3 SSD I installed during the intro. And its wireless network adapter is the Realtek 8821CE and it's a Wi-Fi 6 adapter that also delivers Bluetooth 5.2. So with this hardware, when connected to a 4K display, you get 4K 2160p at 60Hz with HDR and the ability to change the screen orientation to portrait mode, reverse portrait and reverse landscape. Its dual HDMI ports are version 2.1 ports and not 2.0 as indicated on the product page. This has been confirmed on the Intel chipset specifications page and together with its USB Type-C display port, you can achieve three-way duplicated or extended display and you can also add a fourth wirelessly via a television or projector if you so choose. 
It can play 4K HDR HLG AV1 videos, but you have to install the HAVC extension from the Microsoft Store. If you have a touchscreen display, you can power it using a single USB Type-C cable as its power supply can power both the PC and the display simultaneously with touchscreen function. However, touchscreen function is a feature only available on USB Type-C display ports and not HDMI ports. When you connect it to a surround sound AV receiver via HDMI pass-through, you get 5.1 and 7.1 surround sound audio, DTS and Dolby Atmos formats. However, you have to install DTS Sound Unbound from the Microsoft Store to get DTS X. First object -based cinematic audio. So this is the Dolby Atmos. Powerful moving audio that transcends from channels. <laughs> Next, we have Dolby Digital Plus. Whether the soundscape sits the mood of the scene. Here we have DTS HD Master Audio. From Dolby Vision videos, you get Dolby Surround. For 7.1 speaker configuration, you get Dolby True HD. Over here is the right channel. And with a DTS Sound Unbound decoder, you get DTS X. With the 8015, it has the right size and IO port to sit next to your TV where you can enjoy movie streaming applications such as Netflix and Amazon Prime Video in HDR resolution with Dolby Atmos. All you need to do is purchase a wireless or Bluetooth Air Mouse remote control or a wireless mini touchpad keyboard. You can have a look at my top picks using the link in the description below this video. The same applies to YouTube, you can get up to 4K 2160p with HDR. When it comes to Windows gaming, with its Intel UHD graphics on games such as Call of Duty Warfare with resolution set to 1080p and graphics set to low, it struggles dropping to as low as 17 frames per second and barely reaching as high as 30 frames per second. This is Destiny 2 on the Steam platform, which is a bit easier to render and still it remains between 17 and 30 frames per second. Its temperature also rises to around 70 degrees Celsius, so it's recommended that you play smaller games that are easier to render. While its performance with graphics-intensive Windows games might be average, PS2 emulation gaming is next level. Here I'm running the new 64-bit version of PCSX2 and unlike the 32-bit version where you had to make many adjustments to enhance the speed and performance of demanding games such as God of War 2, the 64-bit version is literally plug and play with the ability to increase the graphics quality without loss of performance. Here, I've set the internal resolution to 3x native 1080p with no other adjustment and this is the highest quality in comparison to speed I've seen this game run. 
This is God of War 2 running at 59.94 frames per second with 100% game speed. The same applies for Devil May Cry in very high quality. And here you even have the same performance for Gran Turismo 3. So if you are into PS2 emulation gaming, try out the new 64-bit version on this mini PC. Retro gaming for a 12th generation Intel Core CPU is a walk in the park as it handles all retro arch games smoothly at 60 frames per second. Let's now take a look at its performance benchmarks and where it places on my mini PC rankings chart. In the benchmarking its RAM copy speed and internal storage sequential read and write speeds, the Nova Bench app recorded a transfer speed of 10,907 megabytes per second. Its NGFF M.2 SSD has a sequential read speed of 187 megabytes per second and a write speed of 189 megabytes per second. In testing the speeds of its Wi-Fi 6 adapter and its gigabit LAN port based on my network speed of 154 megabits per second, only the 5 gigahertz band and the LAN port achieved the maximum speed. The 2.4 gigahertz band struggled quite a bit, only achieving 54 megabits per second. In benchmarking its single core and multi core performance, the Geekbench 6 CPU benchmark shows that it has a base clock speed of 1.1 GHz and a boost clock speed of 4.389 GHz, which is just shy of 4.4 GHz. The test generated a score of 2200 single core and 6371 multi core. In benchmarking its graphics performance, in the 3 Mark Gamers benchmark it scored 957 in the Times by Tess, and it also shows that it has an average of 20 frames per second, which confirms what I got during the gaming segment. For overall comprehensive testing, the latest PC version of the Antutu benchmark generated a score of 573,632. And in the PC Mark 10 comprehensive benchmark, it scored 4920. In this test, you can also see its video editing score and its web browsing score, which will also be added to the chart. So the scores are in. And the new Ace Magician 8015 is currently ranked at position number 4 on my mini PC rankings chart, which in my opinion is a little better than I expected. If you would like to view this chart to compare its various benchmarks and features to other models I've reviewed, see the link I provided in the description below this video. My attempt to install alternative operating systems onto the 1TB SSD installed into the expandable storage facility was met with various challenges that prevented me from successfully installing any of them. Android x86 apparently does not have the updated kernel for the 12th generation Intel chipsets, so its EFI keys failed to initiate the installation. And Fido OS and Chrome OS branch framework begins to install and then crashes before it completes. 
In summary, the AD15 is a high-performance mini PC that performs basic and advanced Windows tasks efficiently. It's fast, clocking up to 4.4 GHz. It has expandable storage, but it has a few limitations mainly when it comes to Windows gaming with an average of 20 frames per second and its ability to install alternative operating systems. Its internal cooling fan is one of the quietest, so much so that you have to come very close to here if it's actually on or put your hands to feel the breeze from the exhaust vent. Its attractive design with modern connecting peripherals makes it ideal for home and office usage as well as making it great for college and other educational spaces as it's portable and easy to carry around. So as usual, give this video the thumbs up to show your support. If you are watching one of my videos for the first time and like my unique style of product reviews, then I urge you to click that subscribe button and ring the notifications bell to receive notifications each time I release a mini PC or Android TV box video or decide to do a giveaway. I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to watch my video, stay connected and see you in the next one.